Welcome to Catanet TV. We're very pleased to be joined by uh, Terry Matthews, chairman of MyTel, global entrepreneur, and also national spokesman for CATA in its Innovation Nation campaign, a campaign that's trying to move Canada from 14th to first place. So Terry, let me start with uh, a first question. What's your candid assessment of where Canada is in the high tech field? No, you're not gonna like this answer. I'm, I'm, I'm normally a positive building growth-oriented person, particularly in the high-tech sector in Canada, but you won't like this answer. The fact is, I think before long we'll be looking back and saying the tech cluster in Canada, whether it's Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, we'll be saying they were the good days. We've lost the growth, we've lost the, uh, we've lost the flagships that, that attract people from around the world. I mean, I'm very sad to say that it's actually declining and declining much faster than I could have ever predicted. Now, in my own case, I tend to do business worldwide. I pretty much fund st stuff myself. So I, I'm kind of a little bit of a, a, a loner here, uh, and I don't mind being that, but, uh, but I do care about Canada, and I think the technology sector in Canada is nosediving. It's, this is a very, very sad thing to have to talk about. So Terry, uh, you're saying that we might not get to first place. Uh, I'm interested uh, because entrepreneurs by their nature are optimistic, they build things. Well, you know, we can get to first place. Uh, that's our belief. But are there specific things, recommendations, ideas that you have that should be embraced by all Canadians to move us from 14th to first place? Like what should we do? Well, you know, it's very interesting is that I had within a few days of the Minister of Industry, Minister Prentice, I had a meeting with Minister Prentice, and he's aware of the problems, and uh, he, he presumably met other people too, put together some very good uh, committees. For instance, I'm part of a thing called the uh, STIC, which is the Innovation Committee, to review what should be done about it. I'm pleased that it's being reviewed, so I mustn't be overly negative about how the government is behaving, but I must tell you that, that again, I, I, I'm very unhappy about the state of play. Um, here's an interesting parallel for you, J just to illustrate the problem. And it isn't just the Canadian dollar going up almost 70% against the US. It isn't just that the US takes about 80% of our exports. It's not just that. There are other factors. I mean, as an example, China and India are becoming significant factors. Only a couple of weeks ago, just to sniff out state of play, uh, I went to a Walmart store, a pair of jeans for $8. I mean, in Canada, it costs you almost that much to just buy a, buy a zip without buying the material and making, I mean, $8 for a whole pair of jeans. And frankly, they looked, looked, looked a little bit like Wrangler, really quite. But this is illustrating the problem of massive exports from Asia in particular, and in particular the low cost of engineering. An engineer, new graduate in China, and, and I'm talking somebody selected, really good, five, six thousand dollars a year. In Canada, really good new graduate, seventy to eighty thousand. US, seventy to eighty thousand. India is probably a little more than China, something around nine, ten thousand dollars a year. Now, how do I know that? Well, it's because I do business there. And the upshot is when you can't, let's say, hold your place with a Canadian company, it's somebody deep-rooted, like Nortel. Nortel is a, is a Canadian company. And I speak very often to John Rose, who is the CTO at Nortel. In fact, we met even yesterday talking about the same subject, problems within the Canadian industry, and, and the critical mass being eroded very quickly, I might add. So, uh, uh, you know, here is, here is a, a deep-rooted Canadian company, can't keep them. They say, well, you know, we are basic, pretty, basically considering Canada as a very, very high cost to do business. We, we have to do R&D somewhere else. So there's a Canadian company beginning to move out. And then, and this isn't just simply outsourcing. This is all R&D functions all engineering functions being rebalanced and moved in that particular case to China. Uh, if, if we made you Minister of Industry, what would you have as part of your plan to turn this around? I would very much fight for industry in Canada because, you know, despite um, interest in the government in finding out, it's, it's just too slow. 
whether it's a simple thing. IRAP. IRAP is a great program, and uh, but there's no money in the pot. Then the TPC program, or what is now a, an, an aerospace program. I mean, if you look at that, that, I mean, that's a good program, matching dollars, but there's nothing for anything outside of aerospace. Well, it's just, it's just sadly, it's just uh, absolutely not enough. Uh, so wh whether it's the Asia factor, the low cost of engineering compared to Canadian, whether it's the dollar, whether it's the lack of VC funds, which is a hu like, huge problem. I can't say enough about the lack of a VC or funding from outside the country and Canadians for whatever reason seem uh, on a world scale a little bit risk averse. Uh, so every way I look unfortunately every path is on a negative trend. The cost of the Canadian dollar compared to the US in particular, lack of VC funds, dramatic lack of VC funds and no uh, availability in an alternate manner to get funding for companies lack of government procurement where they uh, certainly in the last 20 years more move, move more and more into systems integration companies to supply product and they almost never carry Canadian uh, technology uh, and as if that isn't enough it goes beyond the federal government into provincial governments the largest companies in Canada typically do not buy Canadian technology this is a very sad state of affairs then on top of that if there are programs as an example I wrap there's no funding in the pot so the, the, the whole issue, uh, not just uh, the rise of the Canadian dollar and so on, the whole issue, unfortunately, is negative. Any one line item would probably be something you can overcome. But you put the lot together, and sadly, it, uh, it, it, I mean, it is taking technology companies in Canada down. Uh, I mean, clearly, Kat is very concerned. Just the fact that we're making this video tells you that the concern has reached a pretty heightened level. So we and let's get the message out. Right thing to do.